Welcome back to the interactive segment and Miss Ifwa Akohara. Hello, you hey. look nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. What's up? Ah, what, what is what is trending? <laughs> <laughs> We're still talking about Ebola. Ebola. Yeah. Do we have a cure? Hmm. Oh, I wish. <laughs> hmm. What are we talking about? Hmm. That is exactly what we are coming to discuss and let you know if there might be a cure for Ebola, hmm. you know. So Spiritual cure, I guess. Don't, don't give all my secrets away, Steve. Steve. Oh, Steve. Cure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't have to touch me. I have to do oh, the Ebola oh, thing. That's what I like yeah. Okay, okay, cool. cool. Right. Okay. Let's see what people are All right. I call on all Liberians to observe three days of national fast and prayer to seek God's face to have mercy on us and forgive our sins and heal our land, Liberia, as we continue the fight against the deadly Ebola virus. That was a quote from President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, and that is how hopeless the Ebola situation has become. Now, more than 930 people have died in West Africa, and it seems there is no end in sight. It has been rumored that colonists can heal Ebola. Really? What do you think? Should we all rush to get some? Well, we'll be finding out. And Nigerian prophet TB Joshua says he has found an antidote in holy water. Well, let's get interactive. My name is Ifwa Akwa Harrison. Joy News Interactive is brought to you in association with Surfline. It's about time. And GN Interactive, as you've heard, is supported by Surfline. Surfline, it's about time. Get interactive with us. We are on social media, facebook.com forward slash Joy News on TV. Also find us on Twitter at Joy News on TV. And then you can also join us on WhatsApp. It's 054-010-9009. The WhatsApp number again is 054-010-9009. Or Send us an email, join news, I am at multitvworld.com. 2,000 holy water bottles, bottles are ready to cure Ebola. Hooray! That is what Prophet TB Joshua is saying. Now, TB Joshua says if countries invite him, he will not only send anointing water, but carry the anointing water himself to the country. So why won't TB Joshua just go to Liberia and sprinkle the holy water? Well, let's listen to him. Each country that's affected, I'm going to donate 2,000 anointing water. Not only that, if they invite me at the capacity of government, I will not only say the anointing water, I will carry anointing water myself to the country. <laughs> Take note, if invitation at capacity of government of that country, like we learn of Liberia, we learn of uh, Syria alone, the land of Guinea, if they invite me at the capacity of government there. I will not only send 2,000 anointed water, I trust the anointed water. Well, you've heard it yourself. So, what do you think about Prophet TB Joshua's holy water antidote? Well, Jessica Boyfio has been out and about. Well, if what TB Joshua has come out to say that he has found the cure for Ebola, it's in his holy anointed water. We're here today to find out what people think about this and also to find out what role faith has to play in the grand scheme of this Ebola madness. I'm actually a Christian, but I don't believe in things like that, okay? If you have faith in God, it's now left to you and God to actually relate. Things like that wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't make God love you more or make God hate you or anything be it. If he has secure, he should convince us that it's from God. But saying it's his holy water or even a holy water from God, come on, it's, it, it doesn't make sense. 
Well, okay, I don't believe in that anyway, Ben. It depends on how people have faith in that, so it can work for them. I know the man of God can do it because I believe in him. He heals people with big cancers and all stuff like that. So Ebola is just a small thing it's in his hands. I believe God will pass through him and do many things. Me, myself, I go to TV Joshua and I believe the man of God, whatever he said, is in it. So some of you believe, some of you are also skeptical. Well, let's move on to Liberia. We go to the telephone lines and we are speaking to journalist Solomon Watkins. Um, he's a Liberian journalist and he's here to tell us how Liberians are patronizing the national fasting and prayer. Welcome to GN Interactive, Solomon. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I want to say a big thanks uh, to the people of Ghana. Mm. And the war I like. All right. Are you also praying against Ebola, Solomon? Of course. You're right. We are all praying in this country, Liberia, covenant, uh, the mosques, and the churches are all engaged uh, in a national fast and prayer uh, for the country. This fast and prayer. Uh, has been something that has been embraced by the Liberal Council of Churches were the first to suggest uh, that. And uh, so the, the Muslim community also embraced the idea and uh, the religious community is fully engaged with fight and prayer in the country. And this is because uh, Liberians believe that this virus uh, that has engulfed the, since engulfed the country uh, considering that the country health uh, system is not as improved as compared to other African countries. And uh, following 14 years of civil crisis, uh, despite the, uh, the limited time celebrated for peace in our country, it's still uh, an honest statement to say Liberia health system is, is better. Mm. So Liberia is funny wise and say, look, this an epidemic that we cannot, we don't have the capacity to fight. We we lack everything, uh, even up to our health delivery system. Uh, everything is uh, backward. So, uh, in the wisdom of the president, I have been suggested that by the Library Council of Churches, so the president, uh, the president in our wisdom, declare national holiday, uh, fast and prayer. Uh, even though it's not a national holiday, it's a national working day, but yet it's being observed. Even on the streets, uh, currently, uh, uh, if we turn a satellite to uh, where the president caught the situation, President Ellen Johnson is in Monovia uh, on the body van, you, you will see uh, Liberians, women, uh, especially women, uh, predominantly. Women are all lying down on the, 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 they are lying on the stage, uh, right opposite the, the Labra James Spring being healthy. So they are praying, they are praying to God, having the three flags of our African nations that are greatly accepted, including, uh, Guinea, uh, Liberia and that of Sierra Leone. Okay. These three flags are all hosted, and they are praying, praying to God, lying all on the ground, praying to God, including myself. I just came from Sarah a uh, few hours before you could call me. So uh, for them, they are, they, they are very extra mad to pray, uh, continuing the prayer even up to the night and the day, they sleep there, and the next day, they continue to pray. Mm. So that's, that's actually the situation in Liberia. Okay. Uh, uh, apart from now, the president of Liberia, as part of the measures to ensure that uh, the issue of Ebola can be a pill in our country, uh, uh, taking into consideration all of the uh, factors ranging from uh, lack of resources, uh, capacity, and other issues, the president has declared a state of emergency for 90 days. Mm. Uh, so. That, that is 
foreign that can't go in, I was declared yesterday, Wednesday. And, and so that is currently ongoing. Liberians are also conscious about the president's declaration, uh, even though there are some critics saying that uh, that is um, that has been something that be later the president uh, declared na a national emergency, All right. uh, which Liberians are already honoring. So uh, declaring a state of emergency was not as important, but now we're saying. That is what is actually ongoing in Liberia. Now, what is time, okay, thank you so much, Solomon Watkins. With every issue. All right, thank you so much, Solomon Watkins is a journalist. He joins us from Liberia. He says Liberians are actually praying because that's their last hope now, actually, really, because, you know, their health system is really behind. And so, you know, they are in solidarity with the call for prayer. Well, joining us right here in Ghana is public health expert Philip Amu. He joins us on the telephone lines. Welcome to GN Interactive. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, Liberians are praying against Ebola and are asking God to forgive them and heal their land. Should we do the same? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I, I believe in prayer. I believe in prayer. And uh, uh, in this matters, uh, whatever we can, uh, you know, appeal to for assistance, it's important. I seriously believe in prayer. I believe that uh, God can intervene in the affairs of men when we um, request and permit him to do so. However, he has also given us responsibilities in this uh, world or in this earth so that we do not, for example, much as no matter how you pray, God will not come from heaven and, and bath you or put food in your mouth. It will still be your duty to go and look for food and eat. It will still be your duty to bath. So it's the, the way I look at the whole scenario. That if, as they pray, it's good, but they still have to do what they have to do in order for the solutions to, you know, in order to overcome this outbreak. Mm, mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, there are rumors that cola nut can cure Ebola. How true is that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the exact time that all these uh, claims do come. And as you know, um, when we are dealing with um, uh, human health, we do not base it on rumor, uh, past experience of some old man, we do not base it on he uh, heresy and hearsay. We have to base it on evidence. And if we are saying cola not, um, you know, works, I am not in the position to prove that. But we have the uh, the the Mampo institution that deal with herbal medicine. I mean, wh whatever if uh, the one making that claim cares, we can send the samples over there for. Uh, appropriate testing and procedures mm. so that if it is proven to help why not mm. i mean this will be a local remedy this will be one of our kind and i mean we will promote it with all the energies in us Indeed. but as long as until the scientific proof is done we cannot trust um you know we cannot put human health to it that is very very crucial the other thing is that yes a lot of things can kill ebola germ but, you know, can they discriminately kill Ebola and leave the human cells so that when this same collapse enters the human body in the form in which he is saying, would he kill the Ebola and leave the blood cells or leave the tissues? <laughs> you see, so it is not as simple as that. A lot of claims are coming out. Well, we have no problem with it. If you say it's doable, send it through scientific rigor. And when it passes and it's allowed, oh, why not? It is our kind. It is, you know, uh, it's homemade. And we will be very glad to use it. But until then, we are not going to take all these years. We are not going to, you know, um, 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 you know uh, put human life to the test of it. So you're saying you don't have the capacity to test some of these years? 
No, no, no. I said Mampon um, uh, Institute for Herbal Research that. is there. You know, uh, herbal medicine research is there. So if the individual is claiming he could do so, let him send it over there and put it to the rigor. Okay. Once it is allowed, I mean, it is tested, tested and proven, then, I mean, this can be made available uh, for commercial use across uh, Ghana and the whole world. Okay. But, uh, you know, throwing this ESS in town is, 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 is neither here nor there. All right. Now, with so many religious messages going around and people believing in holy water and other spiritual issues, how is it affecting your public health campaign? Yeah, I mean, and again, this is not surprising. When the flu pandemic swept over Europe and the America, all these things uh, came, you know, all attribute, attribution to spirit to them and all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, uh, spiritual power and so on and so forth came in. But eventually, it is the scientific approach that unraveled the mystery behind the, the pandemic and sorted it out. So uh, we are not surprised. You see, he history will always repeat itself. As long as this is deadly disease, this deadly Ebola is, uh, you know, uh, on the ravage, you know, these things will come up. And uh, we, like I said, we deal with scientifically proven uh, method. We do not say, um, you know, uh, spiritual approaches do not work or they, do, uh, they work or they do not work. All we are saying is that, okay, if indeed it does work, it will prove, the lab will prove it. You pray, um, they do whatever for the individual and others, uh, uh, um, the, 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 the uh, blessed water, or whatever should be able to prove that it has taken off the virus and the individual is well you know right. but we will not take all these one this you see we do not trust a, a, a very confident person you know talking you know self-confidence person talking we do not trust or, or shouting or, or or you know agitating or something we do not take all those all we right deal with proven scientific approach which is safe for human being and that is what we will take. All right. Thank you very much. Public All health right. expert Philip Amo on the telephone line there. Now we continue to ask if we have so much faith, why are we still scared of Ebola? Let's take our second video blog. Maybe because that is the first time they are hearing that word of Ebola, so it's like they are getting scared, but once you trust in God, yeah, no matter what, your faith can never go away. I don't know, but I pity those who are scared, yes, because if you have faith, I mean, that should be the first thing, keeping you, you know, strengthful. I'm not scared, just because I have faith, and I'm hoping up that God will just save us all from this mess. You know, we have people, they don't believe in anything about God, but we have people, they believe us. So we, we the believers that is we don't we are not afraid of anything about Ebola. We know HIV have come, but we have been there for many years. It has never touched some of us. You understand? So the same thing, Ebola can come if it's this, um, how do you call it, demonic sickness or whatever it is. God knows His children. We can pass through. Well. You've heard it all. Some people believe that TB Joshua is the man of God and he has the cure. And others, well, not so much. What they all believe, though, is that if you have faith, Ebola really does not have a business with you. If we are back to you in the studios. Thank you very much, Jessica. I'm on to Facebook now to read some of your comments. We've been asking... We've been asking about faith and what you think about faith healing us. And Prosper Mensa says, God is, omni God is an omnipresent God. He has given us power over Ebola. I don't need any anointing water oil, anointing water or oil to command Ebola to leave. Joland Frim. Frim Princess, so he's waiting to be invited before he helps. And Dankwa James says he should stop the Boko Haram first with the so-called holy water. Now, 
Du Zapayem says he's a human being and must have sympathy for humanity if he can. Innocent Nyako says man of God should not be criticized. Has he been given the chance and he has not proven himself? Spare him. Uh, we'll take more of your comments after this break. <laughs> Welcome back. You're still watching GN Interactive, supported by Surfline. It's about time. Now, I'm still reading a couple of your comments. We've been asking on Facebook what you think about Prophet TB Joshua sending holy water to countries affected by the Ebola virus. Now, Mohammed Mawan says they say prevention is better than cure. If he can help, he should do it now. Jonathan Arthur said the Liberia government should invite him to come and rescue them from this deadly disease. Duke Boating, you say, let's see what happens. Samuel Akromond keeps it very simple with an amen. Andy Estrada says, I see it this way in God's word, James 5, 14 to 16. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces powerful results. Well, on that note, we end the comments on the Ebola virus. But before we go, I want to tell you that for three days, hashtag GH pronunciations, pronunciations, I know, but GH pronunciations is trending on Twitter. Whereas like Ice Block and Animex <laughs> have been trending on Twitter. Well, let's find out more in the next blog. What is trending? Trending for three days now is the hashtag Ghanaian pronunciations, which looks at some of the ways Ghanaians pronounce things. Even the hashtag is spelt in the way a Ghanaian would say it. So instead of pronunciation, it is pronunciation. Here are some of the interesting tweets we found. 16 is pronounced as Sistine. Thousand is pronounced as Thousand. Amen is pronounced as Amin. Arsenal is pronounced as Asna. Birthday is pronounced as birthday. Brother is pronounced as blah. Bodyguard is pronounced as bodyguide. Trunk is referred to as boot. Blackberry is sometimes called brackbelly. Burger is pronounced as boga. Sneakers are referred to as kambu. Charlotte is sometimes said as charlotte. Chewing gum is sometimes referred to as chingam. boot was the British pronunciation versus the American pronunciation of trunk. Uh, but yeah, that's what's on JN Interactive today. Uh, we'll be right back. You know, we appreciate you for sending us all your comments. Unfortunately, we cannot read them. The time is too short. Uh, Steve is back. Yeah, I'm back. Hi. Yeah, you know, the, my favorite pronunciation is chungo. Chungo. When I was a child, I used to take a lot of chungo. But I thought boot, they said boot is... Kambu. Uh, uh, cam oh, it's a kambu. We all know that. And black. Oh, and blackberry. <laughs> black. Oh. But you <laughs> know, that's not the only but thing trending, though. Yeah. You know, Al Jazeera picked us up on Facebook. Cool. They picked a story of us on cool. the Cool. A story we did, right? Yeah. Ghana's economic cool. growing pains. And it's, it, was, it was actually on, 
Oh, big, big story. story. Mm. Oh, we're trending. We're very popular. We're trending. Al Jazeera. That's I big. Beg. That's big. That's big. We That's are global. big. We are big of too, course, man. Of course, we are, we are. global. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, that's nice. It's nice to see uh, our story being picked on international networks, and that's that's a kudos to the team. Yeah, exactly. We have a fantastic team, and uh, you fantastic audience who make it possible for our content to reach that far. My name is Stephen Anti. That's how we wrap uh, with the today's big story interactive. Mm. My name is Ifwa Kwa Harrison. Have a good evening. Good evening. Join News Interactive was brought to you in association with Surfline. It's about time.